everyone, it's Anne Marie. Very, very warm welcome to you again to our Pilates evening together. Um, if you're watching this live, I hope you've had a wonderful Easter and really enjoyed the beautiful weather that we've been having. Hopefully, you managed to get some time in your back garden to get a bit of sunshine in your life. Okay. Well, I'll just have a couple of minutes, as I did last week, we'll just have a couple of minutes of breathing just to allow people to get their uh, technology set up. Um, also, tonight, if you have one and you'd like to use one, um, I'll be using a strap, so something like a belt or a resistance band or a yoga strap, anything like that, just for a hamstring stretch. You don't have to have one, but it can be quite nice. We've got a couple of minutes if you want to rummage one out now before we properly get going. Okay. So let's just do some deep breathing. We'll just start in our neutral position. I'll talk you through that properly in a minute, but just while we're warming up. Breathing in, two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, breathe out. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, and in. Two, three, four, and hold. Two, three, four, and hold. just joined us a very very warm welcome to you um, so tonight uh, we've got quite a nice class tonight a little bit of mobilization built into tonight hopefully um, it will ease any little aches and pains as always I haven't particularly planned this with any injuries in mind please listen to your body please do what feels right for you if you need to take a break do if you want to make a modification do I will try and give you some options so that you've always got something you can do if you would wish to do something otherwise you can always take a little break if you need to okay but let's just start getting our alignment how we like to have it. So starting with your feet hip distance apart. Remember those pointy bones at the front of the hips, feet exactly that far apart. So something like probably four to six inches for most people. Okay, and we're just gonna rock forwards and backwards through the feet. So just in up and back, really allowing some movement into the feet, allowing the body weight to move. Maybe just gently as you're easing back, push the hips gently back, and maybe coming up onto the toes, working a little bit into the balance as well, but just allowing the feet to get some movement through them. Okay, and resting it in the middle there, and if it's comfy to do so, just going to the outside of the foot, inside of the foot. So gently taking the feet out and in, just bringing some movement again into the ankles. And now I'm going to let the body weight settle right into the middle of the feet. So in between the front and back and in between the side to side. Okay, so really cent centralise right over that middle. Okay, moving up the body. The knees are gently soft, so they're not looking out, they're not pushing back. They're just gently soft, but we're still standing up nice and tall. Okay, we're coming up to the hips. I just want you to tuck under and over on the pelvis. So if you'd like to, you can hold on to the pelvis as you're going. So just feeling that sensation, imagine that bowl of water inside your pelvis, we're just rocking it forwards, rocking it backwards, easing that movement into the lower back. May feel a little bit stiff, might just need, oh, just a little bit of extra pushing backwards, tucking under, but feeling really nice as you're getting that mobilization into the lower spine and letting that come to settle so it settles that bowl of water, feels like there's no water coming out of the front or the back, side or side. It's just really nice, central, and the water is just holding right in position. Okay, from here, I just want you to visualize pulling up through the spine from the bottom of the tailbone, pulling the spine all the way up to the top of the head. So we've got a lovely long position. The ribs are directly over the hips, so they're not flaring out, they're just tucking in directly over the top. Okay, we're going to have the shoulders forwards, up, back and 
ease them down the back. As you ease them down, just feel that length in the neck. Feel the shoulders drawing down. So you've got this really nice, gentle stretch in the neck and the top of the shoulders. The shoulder blades are squeezing ever so slightly together at the back. The hands will naturally point in towards the legs or out towards the front. But you've got this tall, long spine, long, comfortable position, really feeling lovely and neutral and centered in yourself. Okay, let's go for that full and wide breathing again. So we did a little breathing exercise, some box breathing at the start of our uh, session tonight, but let's focus on our thoracic breathing. So breathing into the rib cage is how we like to do our Pilates breathing. So if you want to, have your hands uh, on the rib cage. You might want the fingers just to touch in the middle. And as you breathe in, take a full and wide breath. Feel that rib cage opening out as the lungs expand, the breath expands into that area. And as you breathe out, you feel the fingertips coming back together. So you've got that bellows in the rib cage. You feel them going out and in. Feel your breath bring some calm to you, really enjoying the relaxation, enjoying the calm. I do hope your Easter weekend has been relaxing and calm, but I know for some of you it won't have felt like that, so let's enjoy this time we have together and enjoy the relaxation we can get together. And from here, I just want you to visualize the contraction of your core. And tonight we're gonna to use that hipster belt analogy. So imagine you've got a belt around your hips, you've got 10 notches on the belt, on your next full and wide breath in, I just want you to tighten that belt to the tenth notch. So breathe in and tighten. It's really a difficult contraction. You're really holding it all in. The pelvic floor is pulling it, everything's pulling in, and it's really difficult to breathe. So breathe out and relax. Breathe out and relax. Okay. And next time on our next full and wide breath in, we're just going to breathe in, take it to the fifth notch on the belt. So a half contraction of the pelvic floor, a half contraction around the hips, just that gentle tightening around the hip area. And this should feel a lot more comfortable. You should be able to breathe through this reasonably comfortably, but it's still a little bit stronger than we're gonna hold for the session. So on your next breath out, just release. Just release it there. And have one or two breaths to recover. Okay. And next time when we breathe in, we're just gonna go to that third notch on the belt. So breathe in. So that gentle tightening around the hips. So everything's just got that little connection. I'm just feeling the pelvic floor gently tucking up inside and I'm just feeling that gentle tightening around the hips. I'm gonna to aim to hold that as much as we can for the rest of the session. I'll keep reminding you of that hipster belt as we're going. Okay, so we've got our lovely long alignment, full of my breathing, my core's contracted. Let's get going with our practice. Okay, so we're just gonna start with some shoulder rolls. So taking the arms up, Leading with the fingertips all the way to the top, reaching the arms if they can go slightly behind the shoulders, all for the good. But just feeling the range of your motion around the shoulder joint. It's a slow, controlled movement. There is no rush. You're just going to enjoy how that feels into the joint. If anything's feeling twingy, if it's not working for you, just do the range of movement that does work for you, but maybe actually you want to work really extending how far you can go in all directions and really feeling that shoulder joint working for you. So nice and long reach and wide. Now this time we're just going to do it with one arm. So take one arm up, take it all the way to the top. When it gets to the top I want you to look in the opposite direction. So turn the head, the palm points away. I'm just going to ask that you brush the palm away and down and bring it back to the side and we'll switch sides. So arm up, palm points away, head facing the opposite direction and sweep the arm down. So we've got this long movement. Oh, we can make it really smooth and continuous. But getting a little bit of mobility through the neck as well as we're turning away. Should all feel quite nice, fluid, comfortable wonderful but really feeling with the fingertips how high can you get how far apart can you get the, the arms from the body wonderful and from here we're just going to do a little bit of side to side flexion with the body so just starting in that neutral position I'm just going to take your ear over to the shoulder 
and switch sides. So feeling that gentle stretch down the side of the neck. And gradually, I'm gonna allow more and more of the spine to get involved. So let the shoulders just tip. When the head comes, the shoulders tip with them. The fingertips are just easing down the side of the leg. And as I keep going, it's going more and more, very gradually. So more and more of the spine is getting involved each time until you're reaching the fingertips and maybe you can get the fingertips down to knee level. You might find the opposite elbow gently coming up as well. But you're reaching down and really feeling that stretch along the side. Now, I want you to, instead of just reaching down, start to bring that reach out to the side. So maybe towards the bottom corners of your room and feel yourself reaching out to the side reaching, getting slightly higher, and as they get higher, just allow the feet to release. So I'm just gonna gently come up onto one leg. As I'm reaching up, really reaching across the room, and across, lovely. Really nice big movement. And feeling the stretch along the side of the body, working with the balance, the hips are getting involved in the movement, the legs getting involved, a bit of strength in the side of the leg. It's all getting involved, the shoulders are in there. It's a lovely whole body movement. Wonderful. It's lovely and from here we're just going to allow the arms to swing around the body. Just getting some rotation. This is smooth movement. I'm allowing the heels to come up either side. The feet are a little bit wider than they would be normally. Okay, and from here, I just want you to imagine with your arms, imagine you're just wiping a big kitchen counter. So really reach up, forwards, and around. And to the side, forwards, and around. So we've got that big, big movement. Really lovely, flexion and twisting and rotation of the spine, getting the whole body involved again. It's a nice big move, we're warming up the muscles, warming up the joints, feeling the sensation of movement. Wonderful. Okay, and we'll rest it there. And we're just going to start with some flexion now into the spine. So I'm going to turn side on. It might be a little bit easier for you to visualise what I'm doing if, you, if I'm side on for you. So side on, I'm standing up nice and tall, starting with that neutral spine, core contracted. I'm just going to start tipping the chin and allowing the upper body to slouch. So the body weight is just going back into the heels. I'm slouching at the front and I'm opening up, chest up to the sky. And this time I'm going to go a little bit lower. So slouching down, still got that core contracted, just a little bit more and bringing it back up, opening up and out. And what I'm going to do as I get lower and lower, just making sure each time the spine is peeling down. So chin first, then the upper back, mid back, down to the lower back, replacing the vertebrae on top of each other and opening out. And this time when I get to the bottom, just hold it down there. So just get down, let the arms hang, the head hang. Now from here, I want you to bend at the knees so the bottom goes back and down like a squat. You're still head low down to the ground. What I want you to do is reach the fingers along the floor and forward so the spine is going to straighten and I'm gradually going to sweep the arms up and let them back down to the side. So I'm going to roll down with the spine vertebrae by vertebrae, coming down, slowly, 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 work at your pace. When I get to the bottom, bend at the knees, squat back, reach the hands forwards, really the length, length in the spine, length in the arms, and sweeping the arms down. So let's do that again. We're just going down, the spine, the top of the head is hanging, bend at the knees, sweep the arms up, spine lengthens, up, and round, I'll just show you a couple from the front. So we just tilt the chin, peel it down, peel it down, peel it down. Still got that core contracted. Okay, bend at the knees, sweep the arms up and forwards. Up and up and up and up and up, reaching up, 
Oh, one more, one more. This feels really nice. Okay, tilt the chin, peel, peel, peel. So it's just going away from the wall behind you. When I get to the bottom, bend at the knees, sweep the arms. Lovely, straight spine up and release it there. Wonderful. We're just going to pedal through the feet, making sure the ankles are nice and warm. We've already warmed up through the hips and through the knees with that squat and reach. Lovely. Okay. As you know, as always, my favourite bit of the workout is the balance. So, tonight's balance, we've got two balances for you. They both involve quite a lot of strength as well. So take it at your pace, okay? The first one, I'll show you from the front, I will show you from the side in a second as well. We're gonna start with a lunge forward. So in a lunge position, if you can see, my feet are still kind of hip distance apart, but it's like they're on tram tracks. One is just much further forward than the other. The bottom of a lunge, the knee should be directly under the hip. The front knee should be no further than the midfoot forwards. Okay, so we're gonna go down into this lunge position. I want you to almost make a pistol with your fingers. And we're just gonna sweep to one side, keeping the hips pointing forwards, back to the middle, sweep to the other side. And one more each side. Now you should be feeling this in the legs. And the ankles and the knees and the glutes and okay, come back up. Wonderful. We're gonna switch sides, but when we switch sides, I'm gonna show you side on so that you can see it side on. Okay, so this time, when we get into our lunge position at the bottom, so what you can see, my knees directly under my hips, my front knee no further forward than the middle of my front foot, spine nice and long, tailbone kind of just tucked under, so we've got a nice long straight spine, I'm not tucking, not having a duck bum, just tuck it in. Okay, bringing the arms up and then sweeping one way. Shoulders still drawn down the back, core still contracted, and back. And back, and bring it up. Oh, you should be feeling that on your quads. My goodness, quads and boots, fantastic. And we'll do it one more each side, okay? So I'll show you side on in this direction. Now, you've got to be very careful you don't do the same side. Okay, let me think about this. Who knows, who knows, it'll be fine. I'll just make sure I do both. Okay, so we've got that lunge position. Taking it to the bottom, sweep the arms up, over to one side, over to the other. Okay, so keep breathing. Don't scream at me. It's all good for you, nicely. Okay, last time, switch sides. Taking it down. Now, if it is a bit much, don't take it as low. Just doing this long stance position, that's fine. If you're ready, take it down. Okay. I can only imagine what faces you're probably pulling now. I'm feeling it. I'm doing it with you, I feel it too. Oh, rest it there, wonderful, wonderful. So you should be feeling that in the legs and in the glutes. We've got one more uh, balance for you tonight. And again, it is quite um, strong on the legs, so work at your pace as always. It's gonna be just a squat into a calf raise, okay? So squat position, if you remember, we've probably talked you through before, but let's do it again. Feet maybe hip distance, maybe a little bit wider, if that's more comfy for you, that's fine. Just make sure the knees track the same direction as the hips in a squat. Your bum goes back and down, chest stays proud. Okay, that is a squat. That's how we should comfortably and safely be getting down and up. So, our move then tonight is a squat down as deep as is comfortable for you and raising up onto your toes. And squat down, raising up. Squat down, wonderful. So just, if you want to, and it's comfy, you can hold that balance. Or you can keep it as a continuous movement. So you're just going down and up, really working those calves. Working them nice and hard. So it's really great for the whole of the legs. You've got the glutes firing, you've got the quads firing at the front, glutes at the back on your bum. You've got your calves firing. You're working on your balance. Ankles working hard, everything's working hard, okay. Right, for this extra bit of balance, extra bit of strength into the calves, bring the feet just a little bit narrower. We're just gonna go up and down on the calves, okay? I'm gonna give you two options. If you want to, it's a double leg, raise and lower. If you prefer to, have a little bit of a challenge, take it as a single leg, raise and lower. Okay, we're gonna do 10 on each side, or two lots of 10 in the middle. If you need to hang on to something, hang on to something, that's fine. 
okay? But if you want to take the challenge, here it is. I don't mind where your arms are, wherever you like, okay? Wherever you like. When you're ready, so we're gonna go 10, nine, try not to let that heel drop down, eight, seven, six, whoa, this is wobbly, isn't it? Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa, awesome work, other side. Oh, if only there was only one side, it'd be much better. Right, when you're ready, okay, let's take it. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, working hard, seven, squeeze that calf, eight, nine, ten. Fantastic, awesome work guys, awesome work. Whole of your lower body like jelly now. I do understand, <laughs> but it's all good. Right, <laughs> I'm just gonna ask that you come to the back of your mats and we're gonna do a roll down, okay? We've already done some rolling down, but we'll just use this as a transition and a little bit of a rest. So coming back to that neutral position, hold the core in tight when you're ready, tilt the chin, peel the spine. So imagine your spine is like parcel tape. And you're peeling it away, peeling it away bit by bit by bit. Just hang out at the bottom for me. Let's just hold it here. Let's just hold it here. Enjoy this length. Feel the head heavy, feel the hands heavy, just allowing the spine to relax, allowing the vertebrae to just get a little bit of space between them, get some fluid in the vertebral discs, and just relaxing. If it's really tense into your hamstrings, you can bend the knees a bit more, that's absolutely fine. But just allowing the upper body to relax down. All right, and when you're ready, coming down onto the mat, however, is comfy for you, okay? We're gonna be going onto our backs. So we're rolling over onto our backs. And we're going to start lying down tonight. So we're gonna get our neutral position on our backs. So if you start with your feet together, take your heels out, then your toes out to follow. Now hopefully your feet, knees and hips should now be aligned. Should be as though they're on tram tracks. So they're directly uh, kind of in line with each other down the mat, everything hip distance apart. Okay, just relax them. If you need to, give the legs a little wobble, just feel the tension release. You don't need to be gripping on, just feel it release. Okay, we're gonna tilt the pelvis under and over. So we're working into that mobility of the lower spine again, just feel the lower back press into the floor, raise up to the ceiling. So if you had a torch or a pencil on the front of your pelvis, it's drawing a line in between your feet and then above your head and just feeling that lovely movement hopefully that is really nice and comfy for you and letting that come to settle so you've got a small gap under your lower back so you can probably just about put your hands underneath it's just a small comfortable back neutral position on your hips they're not tucking left or right just really centrally positioned Okay, let the shoulders just fall into the mat. So you've got a long spine, bottom of the tailbone to the top of the head. Shoulder blades are drawn down the back, so the neck is long, the shoulders are away from the ears. The chest is nice and open. Shoulder blades gently squeezing in together, the hands falling up or falling to point in towards the legs. So we're going to do a move tonight called knee circles or leg circles. Okay, so from here, we've got our alignment. Let's get some full and wide breathing back. So nice and full and wide through the rib cage. And on your next breath in, I want you to get that core contraction, switch on the hips to belt, and as you breathe out, float one knee up towards the ceiling. Okay, now I'm gonna take you, this is the first level. So from this level, I just want you to imagine you've got a torch on the top of your knee pointing up to the ceiling. And I want you to move that torch to make small circles on the ceiling. Now, what am I thinking about here? I am trying to keep my hips really still. I am trying to maintain that core contraction. I am trying to keep my leg as still as I can. And I'm also thinking about this leg that is down Imagine it's on a thin, thin sheet of ice. And on that thin sheet of ice, I need to just almost lift my foot up. 
and by almost lifting my foot up, that core contraction kicks in even more. And every so often, and you know I'm terrible at counting, but I will keep reminding you if I can, switch directions. So you're gonna have you know, half a dozen, five, ten in one direction, then five, ten in the other direction. But I'm still thinking that upper body is relaxed. So from my tummy button upwards, it's just chilled. Nothing's going on. Really relaxed. Okay, and from here on your next breath out, just let that leg come down. We're going to switch sides. So when you're ready, breathe in, make sure that core's still contracted, breathe out, float the knee, and draw some circles. If you wish to, these circles can be in time with your breathing. Don't rush them. Don't rush them. So if they're not in time with the breathing, don't panic. Just keep it a slow, controlled movement. Don't forget, this leg that's still down is on that thin, thin sheet of ice. So after five or turn in one direction, just switch directions. But I've got the core really switched on to hold this. So I'm holding this hip position. You can if you want to, just have your fingertips on your hip bones, just to try and feel that they're staying as still as you can possibly make them. Okay, and when you're ready, bring that leg down. So we're gonna do it again, and I'll give you an option to make it harder. Well, I'll give you two options. There are two ways you can make it harder. Well, multiple ways, I'm sure. But the ways tonight we'll be looking at if you breathe in, float one knee and then float the other knee. Okay, so I've still got that gap under my back, everything is still solid. I'm going to rotate one knee, this knee that's closest to you. The other knee is still. Now if you wish to keep that second leg back on the floor where it was before, please do so. That's fine. Or another option is to extend the leg. So it's kind of straightening up towards the ceiling and depending on the flexibility of your hamstring will depend on how straight you can comfortably get that up. Don't forget to switch directions and feel free to go back to the option where it's the knee down but I want these hips really still. So if you could look at me from behind, from under the floor, the hips would not reveal what's going on. They're just wonderfully still. Okay, when you're ready, if you need to switch sides in terms of getting the leg down and up, do that. Otherwise, you can go with the other leg. So it's like you're stirring a pot of porridge. That leg that's moving has just got this wonderful stirring action. And it's slow and controlled. And the stationary leg, as best you can, is staying stationary. It's easier said than done because you've got to maintain this stable hip position underneath. Core is switched on and firing. Don't forget to change directions. You've got that gap under the lower back, shoulders still drawn down. Really feeling it in the hip flexors, feeling it in the core. The feet are floppy, calves are floppy, not holding tension in the legs. Holding the tension in the core, holding it in the hips, because that's where the movement's being driven from tonight. All right, when you're ready, take one leg down, take the other leg down. My goodness, that was good, wasn't it? Really feeling that one. Right, let's have a little bit of a release there. Okay, bring one knee in towards the chest, and let the other leg stretch away. Just feeling that release into the hip flex. The hip flexors work really hard on that one. And especially depending on the option you took, if you decided to go for the straight leg, or if you decided to have two legs raised, or even doing it one leg, if you can keep those hips really solid and level, it's really hard work, really hard work. All right, switch legs, just enjoy that little stretch. Just allowing that leg Come in towards the chest and the other leg to just extend away and relax. Okay. And tonight we're going to work again with the shoulder bridge. I have to admit, the shoulder bridge is one of my favourite moves. I love the mobility it gives you in the spine. I hope you enjoy it too. 
So let's get the shoulder bridge position started. So this time we've still got the feet, knees and hips aligned, but the feet are a little bit closer in. So if I reach my fingertips down, I can just about touch the heels uh, on the floor. Okay. Again, if you want to just play with the pelvis, if you want to just tuck it under and over, get in that neutral spine at the bottom. Still keep the shoulder blades drawn down. Okay, we'll let the pelvis rest, shoulder blades drawn down, arms drawn down and away from you and the neck is long. So if you did have a cushion under your head for the last exercise, if that was more comfy for you, can you please remove it for this one? Uh, shoulder bridge, we try to have nothing under our heads. So when you're ready, breathe in, switch on the core, and as you breathe out, I want you to squeeze the pelvis, tilt the hips, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And because we're just starting here, we're just gonna do a few going up and down. So we're peeling the spine up, and then we're laying the vertebrae back down one by one by one. Coming back to neutral every time. Breathe in, switch on the core, breathe out, tilt the pelvis, pushing the knees away, weight in the heels of the feet, and bringing it back down. So it is the glutes that are firing, these big muscles in the bottom, rather than the muscles at the back of the legs, the big muscles in the bottom. And if you can hear that little rattling, that's my hamster, Snaffles. He's obviously woken up for tonight's session. <laughs> and no doubt throwing his food all over the room. Such is life. Such is life. Alright. So just working with this mobility. So coming back through neutral every time, there is no rush. Making sure the core is switched on next time when you get to the top, just hold it there for me. So when you get there, I'm just going to wait for you to get there with me because there's no rush. When you're there, these glutes are firing. The hips are level, shoulders drawn down the back. Now what I want you to do is just allow one hip to drop. So the other side, the glute is still firing and holding that hip high. One has dropped down. And I want you to roll down that side of the back. So that hip remains lower. Getting back to the middle, getting back to a neutral position and coming back up through the centre. So we're working a little bit through the mobility of the spine but we're also giving the back a little bit of a massage. Getting to the top, fire, fire with the glutes. Let the other hip drop and bringing that down on that side. So just getting that extra bit of Mobility, a little bit of a twist. Firings, we're working hard on one side, let the hip drop. And slowly, slowly let the spine come back down. Back up, through the middle, squeeze the glutes, keep going. Push the hips high, knees away. One hip drop, and these should be alternating hip drops. We're going to do one more each side, so coming back up through the middle. Keep the hips high, let one drop. And just feeling that lovely massage down the side of the spine as you come down. And then last time, coming up, coming up, coming up. And when you get there, keep firing the glutes, release one side and peel it down. Oh, lovely. Release it there. Just bring the knees into the chest and just allow yourself to rock side to side. Get that lower back massage as well. Now this is the point if you've got one or you'd like to use one, I'm just going to use my strap to do a little hamstring stretch. You don't have to have one, but it can be really nice and it can really help if you struggle to hold behind your leg. So if you don't have a strap, the stretch we're going for is this one where we're just holding behind the back of the leg, stretch this big muscle at the back called the hamstring. If you do, get the strap just around the middle of your foot and however it's comfy for you, you might just want to hold it like this or you might want to wrap the belt just gently around your hands if it's long enough. It could be a resistance band, a belt, um, anything really, a tie, something like that. Okay, and I'm going to straight up through the knee, let the other leg lengthen away but I can really relax the upper body because I'm not grabbing too far behind the leg. The shoulders can be down on the mat. 
I can get a really nice tension down my leg. So the knee is straight and depending on your flexibility, this, this might be down here and that's absolutely fine. Try to keep that knee straight, but you can still get the tension. Or you might have your head, way, your foot way over your head, which I'm sure I'll never get to. But if you do, fantastic, fantastic. So just enjoying that stretch, breathing through it. You just take a breath in for me. And as you breathe out, you can just ease it in just another inch, if it's comfy. Anything twingy, release it. Just relax and release and just have a full body stretch or just relax in the position. If it's comfy, just go for that extra inch. You should just feel that tension of the muscle stretching. Nothing twingy or painful, just a nice tension. Okay, and release that here so you can just bend the leg. We're gonna switch sides. So basically, if you've got a belt, you might just wanna switch the feet inside. Otherwise, release the leg down, bring the other leg up, however is comfy for you. So again, extend the far leg away. Try to have the leg that's raised straight if you can. And starting with that initial stretch position. And because we're in this relaxed stretch, you can still keep going with your full and wide breathing. Just allowing the ribs to open up and squeeze back down when you exhale. And on your next breath in, breathe in. As you breathe out, just ease that hamstring just a little bit more. So if you don't have the belt, remember you're just holding behind the back of the leg, either behind the back of the quad. Maybe you can reach onto the calf, wherever it's comfy. Or you can use your belt, your yoga strap, and just hold it. And this can be a really nice stretch, especially if you had a long day sitting down a lot or maybe cycling, that can be a killer for your hamstrings. Maybe you feel real tension in there. If you want to buy one of these yoga straps, they're actually they're, they're just a few pounds. You can pick them up off the internet, a place like Amazon and eBay, not much money. But they can really help with this stretch if this is something you particularly enjoy or want to work on. Okay, and we'll release that down. Release that there. So we're gonna come over onto our side. I'll just get my belt out of the way. And I'll move, I haven't yet used my head pads. They will come in for me in a minute. You may have used them uh, on your knee circle. But we're gonna go for a side kick. So we'll come to our side lying position. So the bottom arm, if it's comfy, lying on, uh, your head's lying on the bottom arm. If it's not comfy, just pop your head pads, your cushion, whatever you've got under your head. We've got this long position, so the spine is still extended, the shoulder blades are still drawn down the back as much as they comfortably can be, given my arm is above my head. I've got my hips stacked, my knees stacked, my feet stacked. I'm easing that top hip away just to draw the waist gently away from the mat. So just that sensation that I could squeeze a little straw underneath my waist. I've got that long position. Okay, breathe in, engage the core, and as you breathe out, just float that top leg up and down. So we're gonna do five single leg lifts, and the legs only coming up, probably there's about as much room as a football between my feet, something like that. And after five, I'm just gonna do a double leg lift. Now in terms of your balance, this may make you feel really off balance. You might just wanna have your hand on the floor. If you're quite comfortable in this balance, and don't forget after five double leg lifts, you go back to the singles. If you're comfortable in the balance, you might be able to have your hand kind of lying along your thigh. It's a little bit trickier. Still maintaining, just remember just to relax. Relax the upper body. And after five single leg lifts, we're going for double leg lifts. Now the double leg lift is harder in terms of your balance, so if you need to then put your hand down, please do. If you want to challenge your balance, now your hand pointing up towards the ceiling. Back to the singles. We're just relaxing the upper body. The foot's relaxed, the calf is relaxed. 
What I'm working here is keeping these hips stacked up to the ceiling and working this big muscle on the outer thigh, the abductor, and then doubles. I'm still trying to maintain this gap under my waist. I'm still trying to ease the top hip away, even when I'm lifting that leg. I'm going to do one more set. So you're maintaining that lovely long spine, neutral hips, neutral shoulders. Trying to keep the balance. Don't be tempted to let your hips roll forwards or back. Ah, oh, and that's it, rest it there. You can bring that top leg in front, give it a rub, give it a pat. Get the blood flowing. And we'll just have a little quad stretch while we're down here. So you might want to bend that bottom leg for balance, holding onto the shoelace area of the top leg. Knees together, push the hips forwards. Again, if you struggle to get onto that part of your leg, you might just help to have a little strap around your foot. That could be a way where if you can't normally get your foot towards your bottom, close enough to reach it, maybe having a little strap just wrapped around your foot might do the trick for you. But otherwise, just stick with that quad stretch. Lovely. And relax it there, and we've got a lovely move next. This is another one of my favourites actually. So if you've got a cushion or a head pad or anything like that, pop it under your head now because the hands are going to be um, on top of each other, starting on top of each other directly in front of the shoulders. We've got that sideline position where as though you've fallen off a chair, so you've got 90 degrees at the hips, 90 degrees at the knees. Okay, again I'm pushing that top hip away to maintain a little gap underneath my waist. We're going to do a move called chalk circles. So now the lower body is totally relaxed. This is a really beautiful stretch for the upper body. It's kind of similar to the arm oak things that we've done a couple of times. So this time, breathe in, switch on the core. And as you breathe out, imagine you've got a piece of chalk in your top hand. You're just drawing a circle. All the way, it goes up, up, up above your head. And when it goes over, let your head come round. Open the fingertips so they're going behind your body. So now at the back, my hand is now pointing up, but it's as though I've got chalk just on the end of my finger and it's sweeping down past my hip. I've still got that top hip drawn away and I'm trying, just keep this continuous circular movement, I'm trying not to let my hips roll. So the hips stay pointing up towards the ceiling and that might mean that you can't quite reach all the way down to the floor all the way around. Might mean you're miles away, to be honest. If you're very flexible, you might be able to still take that hand on the floor all the way around, but just open out the chest. Now, as with the arm opening, if there is a position here that would feel really nice to you to hold, you don't have to keep this as a continuous movement. So if you think when the arm's all the way back, you're like, oh gosh, that just feels beautiful on my shoulders, twisting through my spine, just hold it, just hold it, it's fine. And when you're ready, just join us again. Sweep the arm down and back up. And this should just feel absolutely divine. If you do have any discomfort in your shoulder, work with the mobility you've got. So for example, if you can't take your hand all the way above the head, maybe you do just turn this into an arm opening. So it's just going over and back, and that is fine. It's fine if you have some impingement into your shoulder. If it's comfy to go up, but not all the way back, we'll just go to the top and sweep it over the side. Just going straight up to the ceiling. Work with the range of movement that you've comfortably got. And what you might find is over time, through doing more and more of these kind of exercises, arm opening, short circle, those kind of things, you might really notice the difference in your movement, in your ability to get to access these positions that maybe you haven't been able to access for a little while. Obviously working within whatever is comfortable for you, working within whatever impingements you might have or injuries, do not do yourself any harm. This is supposed to feel really lovely and relaxing and really feel like you're making your body feel a bit better. Shouldn't feel uncomfortable. We'll just do one more. Just taking it around once more. 
and letting it come to settle. How nice was that? Fantastic. Right, our next move, I'll just get rid of my head peg, we're going to roll over onto our tummies. We're going to do just the top half of the swan dive. We've done these swan dives a few times now. So take the arms wide so the elbows are at the height of the shoulders, the hands are coming kind of up into the side of the head. So ideally you should be facing down, I'll take my glasses off so I don't face plant them into my mat. You should be facing down, okay, toes together, let the heels flop to the side. That will uh, disengage the glutes, it'll just let the lower body just relax. So I'm just going to work with the upper body portion of this for now. So when you're ready, tuck the tailbone under, relax the legs, shoulder blades drawn down, spine is long. Breathe in, switch on the core, and then slowly float the upper body up. So the head is only coming a few inches off the mat, not far. I want you to engage the upper back. And it's an up and down movement, so keeping looking down at the mat, I'll try and talk you through it, try not to be looking at your screen. But if you want to increase the size of the movement, when you've worked through the full range of motion that your back muscles will give you, just press into the forearms, you might want to press into the hands after that, just to extend the movement, really pushing the chest forwards, and up. So it's the back goes first, then into the forearms, then into the hands if you wish to, coming down the way you went up. Wonderful. So we're just getting a little bit of hyperextension into the back, strength into the upper back muscles, length through the front of the body, Wonderful. We're just going to do one more here. And then I just want you to rest. So you might want to rest with your lying on your side, you might want to lie on your cheek, it might be easiest because then you'll be able to see what you're doing. Um, you might have your hand underneath, whatever is comfy, just resting on your head. You might want to have just a little cushion under your head. What I want to do though now is, is focus on the lower part of the body. We're doing it independently tonight. So from here, if you can straighten up your feet, so they were toes together, heels up, if you just straighten them up so that you're resting on the tops of your feet, and your feet are roughly hip distance apart, I'm just going to ask, you breathe in, switch on the core, and you're going to lift one leg and lower. They're not coming up high, and they're alternating legs. Okay, so I'm working the glutes, squeezing the glute, the foot is floppy, the calf is floppy, but I'm lengthening the leg away. And I'm working those glutes independently. So I'm squeezing the glutes, just still keeping the core strong. Gentle squeeze, gentle squeeze. And we're just going to have a little challenge here, a little bit of uh, endurance for your glutes, so endurance for your bum. It's a big strong set of muscles, they do need to work hard, they do a lot for us. So when you're ready, and if you wish to, if you wish to, just keep with this slow pace and that's all good. And if you need to take a break, that's fine too. But if you want to, I want to turn it into a flutter kick. So the legs are going to be going, if you want to join with me, both legs up and it's going to be kick, 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 kick. Nice and quick, nice and quick. So it's the glutes working really hard, the legs are still floppy, the feet are still floppy. So we go for 10 nine, eight, can you go any quicker? Six, five, four, three, two, rest. Okay, have a little rest. We're gonna have one more go at that, one more little set of flutter kicks. When you're ready, breathe in, put on that hipster belt. So the core's switched on, tailbone tucked under, and hit legs up, and flutter kick, 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 kick. Okay, see if you can get it nice and quick. So it's like a kick, 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 kick. It's almost like a tiny little kick that you do front core uh, if you're swimming. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, nearly there, keep going. 3, 2, 1, and rest. Wonderful. And from here, if you want to, push up and go back to child's pose. So going through, push the hips 
back and down the bottom towards the feet. You might want to have the knees a little bit wider, actually that might feel quite comfy for you. So feet together, knees wide, and just let the chest flop down in between, trying to push the bottom towards the feet. And let the forehead rest on the mat. If it's comfy, you can have the hands above the head. If you prefer to, you can let the shoulders rest down and flop down so the hands are down by the feet and the shoulders are just chilled out. Just relaxing there. Okay, coming back up to all fours. So we're going to have a very quick go at um, a leg pull prone, which is what we've done before. It's kind of very similar to a plank. It's a modification on a plank. So we'll start this move tonight from an all fours position. Okay, so with your shoulders drawn down the back, you can just play with the pelvis. The knees, feet and hips are aligned. Let the pelvis rock up and down, coming to that neutral position so there's a small arch in the lower back, shoulder blades drawn down. So here yeah, we're not going to be doing much with this, so I will just talk you through it and we'll get cracking. So from this position, if you wish, if you have um, discomfort in your wrists, please feel free to come down onto your elbows instead. If your wrists and hands and shoulders feel comfy in this position, that's absolutely fine, okay? If you want to just rest through this, it's all a bit much, just do a few rounds of cat and cow. But I really think this is a fantastic, fantastic exercise for strengthening all through the core and holding the body in a long, strong position. So when you're ready, breathe in, switch on the core, breathe out, and I want you to step one toe back if you can, and the other toe back. So this is a full plank position as a starting position, shoulder blades still drawn down. If that's a bit much, you can keep the knees down, so your straight line knees to the top of the head. But if you can, full plank, keep that core contracted, and I just want you to raise and lower, one heel up towards the ceiling three times, upper body's not moving, switch sides, two, three, and again switch sides, still keeping the body long and strong, don't be tempted to let that bum push up towards the ceiling. If I had switch sides, if I had a broom handle down your back, it would touch the back of your head, switch sides, in between your shoulders, onto your bum and onto your heels, switch sides, last one, keep that core contracted and release, let the knees come down, Whew. we're going to go into all fours, Let's do a few rounds of cat and cow, just to give you that little stretch, it's such a hard but wonderful exercise. Honestly, you'll learn to love it. You'll learn to love it. It's a good one. If you ever, though, with that one, feel any twinging in the lower back, release out of that position. You should just be feeling kind of a strength coming through the core. You shouldn't feel any discomfort in the back from that. And if you do, you need to come out of it. Just take a relax, take a stretch. Just having a few rounds of cat and cow, allowing the back to come up to the ceiling if you want to push the weight forwards or back, side to side. Draw some circles with the hips. It's wonderful. And in the other direction. All right, guys. So I just need you to swap which end you're at. I'll bring my head pads with me because we've got that side kick again. So I'll just pop them up there for now, I don't need them yet. So lying on the side, remember that long side lying position. If you need to, having a hand in front for balance. Knees, hips and ankles aligned. And really focus on keeping those hips pointing up towards the ceiling. Don't be tempted to rock forwards, in which case you're going to be working the glute. Or rocking back, or you'll be working the hip flexor. If you can keep it nice and level, you're working this big muscle on the outside, this is where you should be feeling it. If you find a tendency to rock, what you can do is tuck your other hand just behind you, and if you tuck it under your waist, that also helps you to remember to push that top hip away, if that's comfy on your shoulder. I can appreciate that's not going to work for everybody. 
but it might give you a little reminder. But when you're ready, long and strong position, breathe in, switch on the core, breathe out, lift and lower. So again, that leg is floppy, hips are stacked, shoulder blades drawn down the back. You've got full and wide breathing. And after five or so, we'll do a double leg lift. So it's the breathe out to lift, breathe in to lower. And hopefully that should help you do a nice slow controlled movement. In terms of your balance, this probably feels different to the other side and that's fine. You might need more support, you might need less. Have a go. Go back to the singles. You might want to have a try having this arm raise. Maybe that works for you on the singles, but maybe not for the double leg lifts. Well, just see, just see. See how it feels. Double leg lifts. So still pushing that top hip away. Feet are floppy. Calves floppy. Shoulder blades drawn down the back. Waist away from the mat. So you're pushing that top hip away back to the singles. And you should be working to approximately the same level of fatigue, if you can remember what that felt like. So I'm just going to go for one more set. But it's slow and controlled. Breathe out to lift, in to lower. Keeping that top hip pushed away. Keeping the hips stacked. Double leg lift, and again, remember, if you want to have that hand behind you, just to hold that hip position. Or last one. And relax, relax, relax. Give it a rub, give it a pat. Woo! This works, it's worked hard. And you can give it that quad stretch, so knees together, push hips forward. You might want that bottom leg a little bit bent, just for balance, pushing the hips forwards. We're nearly there guys, we've just got these wonderful chalk circles to go. We're doing a great job, great job. What a lovely way to finish a bank holiday. Okay, so if you can grab these head pads or your cushion, whatever you've got, I will just shimmy forwards just a little bit because I know I'm going to hit my curtain. So if I shimmy forwards, you've got that side lying full and upper chair position. Hands stacked on top of each other, shoulder blades drawn down the back. Breathe in, switch on the core, I'm still pushing that top hip away. Breathe out, and start those circles. Opening out, trying to keep those hips stacked. Isn't it lovely? And again, if you want to hold it anywhere, if there's a position, if you want to hold it open, that's fine, that's fine, just enjoy it. And sweep it back down. So you've got the full range of motion into that shoulder joint. You're opening out, so the back of the move is exactly the same, the back of the move is the same as the arm opening, the hips are still pointing up towards the ceiling. I'm trying to get my chest pointing up towards the ceiling. I'm trying to ease that back shoulder towards the floor. It's working along a long, long spine. So don't be tempted to arch through the spine to either flop forwards or backwards, but imagine you're going around a long post. Opening it out. Wonderful. Again, you might just be able to hear my hamster in the background. He's having a great time, just as we are. And don't feel like you need to copy my speed. If you're thinking, gosh, she's rushing round, just chill out, do it slower, it's fine. There is no rush. Draw those shoulder blades down, try and get the hips pointing up towards the ceiling. And let's just finish this one. And 
rest it there. Wonderful. We're going to come over back onto all fours from here. So coming back onto all fours. Just again, a couple of rounds of cat and cow. Gradually allowing the body to slowly come up towards a standing position. Okay. So taking the body weight backwards, tuck the toes under. Just gonna stand up slowly, straighten up through the legs first and gradually peeling up through the spine. Head is the last thing to come up. Standing up nice and tall. Gonna have a couple of big breaths in and you're ready. And one more. Thank you again guys, it's a pleasure to spend my Monday evening with you. I do hope I'll be seeing you again next week. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it and please like it, share it, do whatever, do whatever you want to do um, to encourage others to have a go to. Alright, I'll see you soon, bye bye.